morning. Welcome to good morning, everyone. Welcome to class. Uh, welcome, Erila, Karen, and all the in-person students. Uh, we'll begin with a word of prayer. Uh, can I ask Karen? Can you please lead us in prayer, please? Karen, can you lead us in prayer? Yes, Pastor. Oh, God, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful day. We thank you for adding another day in our lives and helping us, Lord, to see this day. But as we start this class, I pray that we would understand from your word, Lord, and that you would speak to us through your servant, Lord, and help us, Lord, to understand, Lord. We pray that the Holy Spirit would help us, Lord, to understand everything that ha that is being taught today, Jesus, and help us, Lord, to apply it in our own lives, Jesus. Help us, Lord, to not only be hearers, but also doers of your word, Lord. Lead us and guide us throughout this day. In Jesus' name, I ask and pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Karen. Good to hear your voice. I'll just uh, present the Are you all able to see the screen, the notes? Uh, online students, uh, do you need uh, me to present the, uh, uh, the, the notes what we are looking at today? Can I hear some feedback from the online students? Our in-person students have their own uh, books, the publication books, the copies. What about the online students? Do you want me to present this on the screen? Okay, no need. Okay. Need to have a copy. Okay, what about Karen and uh, Arela? Prabhu? Okay, so I'll stop presenting. Last week, uh, we began uh, looking at chapter four, where we were looking at uh, um, uh, conduct, you know, how uh, we need to conduct ourselves as ministers of God, as people who are uh, in the ministry. So we looked at uh, various points. Uh, we uh, the last point we looked at we need to respect uh, people's time uh, by being punctual by starting uh, whatever meetings gatherings that uh, we are conducting uh, on time and uh, we looked at the importance of honoring God in that time and also honoring and respecting people who uh, come on time who are there who make it on time and how it's important for us uh, to start the programs uh, on time so that we can teach people um, that we need to honor God uh, in the way that we use our time. And also we, when, you know, when we have to be somewhere, uh, make sure that we are also honoring other people uh, by keeping time, by being there on time. Okay. Uh, just a few more points um, in this chapter on conduct. Uh, we need to be blameless before uh, God and man. Uh, look at what uh, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 3 and 4, and 2 Corinthians 8, verse 21. So can two of you please read that uh, verses, 2 Corinthians 6, 3 and 4, and 2 Corinthians 8, 2, 21, please. And the 2 Corinthians 8, 21, the second reference. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 6, 3, 4. We give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. But in all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God. Thank Second you. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 8, 21. Providing honorable things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. Thank you. So here uh, Paul is saying that, you know, uh, we need to conduct ourselves, our life, our ministry, whether it's before God or with, before men, uh, both in our personal life, in the way that we um, uh, 
you know, uh, how we are in our secret uh, uh, space of our own rooms, in our own houses, you know, how we conduct ourselves in uh, at home uh, and how we conduct ourselves in uh, public uh, or, uh, you know, whether it is in church or whether it's outside on the street or uh, in the shop, in the mall or uh, office or whether you are serving a church, wherever, you know, it says that we need to conduct ourselves in such a way that we will be blameless. Uh, and he says here in 2 Corinthians 6, 3 and 4, we give no offense in anything that our ministry will be blamed. So we need to conduct our lives in such a blameless way that no one will be able to point their finger um, at us so that, you know, um, we will not just be put to shame, but uh, the office, the ministry that we hold, uh, the kingdom that we belong to, the kingdom of God that we belong to, and the king of this kingdom, God, will not be shamed, will not be brought to um, uh, disgrace. So in every area of our life, uh, we need to conduct ourselves uh, in such a way that we are uh, blameless. You know, we all are human. We all make mistakes, but um, uh, we can. Uh, it's important that we recognize our mistakes that we repent of our sins, that we change in those areas, ask, the, ask uh, God's grace um, uh, in, in those areas for us to change, uh, to work on those areas, those weaknesses, the challenges that we have, and also uh, ask God for his forgiveness. And, uh, you know, once we receive his forgiveness, uh, we repent of our sins, we forgive, uh, we receive God's forgiveness, then we need to move on. And also when we repent of our sins, we don't go back and continue sinning in the same areas, but we work on those uh, areas and uh, we know that uh, God's grace is more than sufficient to um, help us. Okay. Uh, the next uh, uh, area where we need to conduct ourselves is we need to enjoy life, but avoid a loose talk and foolish uh, joking or jesting or, you know, just foolishly talking some things that, um, that are not honorable. Uh, of uh, uh, of a, a child of God, um, you know, that does not, uh, 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 you know, uh, edify others, that does not enrich others, that does not build others. Uh, so we need to be careful even when we are joking what we are saying, what we are uh, speaking. So can one of you please read Ephesians 4, 29 and uh, chapter 5, verses 3 and 4, please? Ephesians Chapter 4, 29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you, as is fitting for saints. Neither filthlessness, filthiness, or nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. Thank you. Um, so here it says, let no corrupt word come out of your mouth, proceed out of your mouth. Uh, but what is good for edification? That means what builds up others, what strengthens up others, what encourages it others, what comforts, exhorts um, others. We need to speak such things. And here in uh, chapter 5, verses 3 and 4, uh, you know, uh, Paul is uh, saying, um, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, there should not be any kind of filthiness or foolish talking, even foolish talking. You know, sometimes we are just joking, we're talking casually. Uh, we can say some foolish things. He says, even uh, don't speak foolish uh, talk or coarse jesting that means uh, you know jokes that are uh, uh, that are not uh, that improbable that is not required uh, that is not right you know because um, it's not fitting of saints you know all of us are saints all those who are believers in Christ Jesus are called saints so it's not fitting of us even uh, you know to engage in foolish talk or in uh, jokes that uh, are not fitting that are not uh, 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 relevant or probable for that uh, situation okay and uh, the last point uh, in uh, when we're looking in conduct is um, yeah, this is the last point don't demand comforts or um, luxuries you know uh, as ministers of god 
uh, when we uh, are invited by other churches, you know, we demand uh, if you have to travel from our city to another city, then we demand, um, you know, uh, uh, we can go by bus or we can go by train, but we demand flight tickets and then uh, we want to stay in a luxurious place with an AC accommodation. And, uh, you know, if they don't give us proper, they don't take care of our needs, like, uh, you know, uh, proper food or, uh, uh, or uh, you know, uh, travel within that city from uh, the place where we are staying to the place uh, where the meetings are held. You know, we demand a luxury car, a, a AC car. Uh, you know, uh, we need to remember that uh, or we need to remind ourselves um, that we are serving God. And, you know, whatever the people uh, can afford, whatever they can do, I, I'm sure they, can do, they do their best when they invite us. You know, whatever is uh, in their own, uh, uh, you know, uh, how much they can afford, what they can do for us, I'm sure they will do their best for us. And we need to, you know, go with what they are providing, what accommodation they're providing, what facilities they're providing, and not demanding things from them. Uh, sometimes we even say, you know, uh, you have to pay us so much uh, if we have to come and preach and teach. Um, uh, because uh, so much of our time we're investing and in preparing and coming uh, and all of those things, you know, we need to remember that uh, uh, and also remind ourselves that, you know, they are giving to us from uh, people's tithes and offerings. And those tithes and offerings which people are giving are actually, it belongs to God because, uh, you know, uh, th our tithes is what goes into the house of God. And, uh, uh, you know, we need to remind ourselves that the money that is being used um, uh, uh, for our travel, for our stay, and for, you know, conducting the whole um, uh, uh, crusade or meetings, whatever, it is from the tight money. It's God's money. And we need, we're accountable to God for that money that we spend. Now, we need to ask ourselves this question if, you know, if... Um, I was volunteering to go and serve in that place, then would I go in a flight, uh, take a flight, or would I go by train or I'd go by bus? Uh, if I was volunteering, would I, you know, uh, and I had to pay for my own pocket, would I book an AC uh, accommodation, a luxurious hotel? Uh, so, you know, we need to think on those lines and whatever is given to us, you know, we are going there for a purpose to serve the people of God, to minister to them. It's not about what they give us. It's not about how they treat us. Uh, but it's, um, you know, what we are uh, willing to impart into the lives of people, what we are willing to, you know, share from what God has imparted into our lives or what he has uh, laid upon our hearts. And, uh, you know, uh, when we do that, you know, uh, we are giving glory to God and also we are, um, uh, you know, honoring him in the way that we live, in the way that we uh, conduct ourselves. And so we need to even value resources that uh, God has given to us and, you know, uh, is providing uh, to us through somebody else's hands. The other thing I need, I, I would like to uh, reiterate or, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, remind us is that when we serve God, you know, uh, we need to honor God uh, by being good stewards of the time, uh, the resources, the energy that he's given to us, the facilities that he's given to us. And also we need to remind ourselves that, you know, uh, when we are serving God, the money that we are getting paid is the tithes of uh, what people give into the church. So, you know, I keep reminding myself that, you know, even as I'm serving in church and I'm ministering in church, the, the salary that I'm getting, the pay that I'm getting uh, for my labor is, um, you know, tight money. And if I'm not being um, diligent and faithful and sincere and um, and honest in um, in the way that I serve, in the way that I use my time, in the way that I use the office uh, time that, uh, you know, uh, the way that I work, uh, being diligent, being sincere, um, you know, I'm actually being more accountable to God because the salary that I'm getting is tight money, you know, and God is going to hold me accountable uh, for that. So sometimes we forget that, you know, in ministry, we take people take things casually, time casually, um, 
uh, you know, using the office hours for unnecessary personal work and personal use and just resting and, uh, you know, for leisure time and entertainment, uh, which is wrong. You know, we are accountable to God for uh, the time, the resources and the money that is uh, going uh, into even for all of you who are being trained, uh, uh, even as Bible college students, you know, being trained. Uh, it's the type of money that, you know, people are giving to us that uh, we are able to use all of these facilities. So, you know, we are accountable to God and how we spend time, uh, how you are using, making use of your time to equip yourself in the word of God, to train yourself, to build yourself up in the word of God, in the things of God, um, so that you can launch out to be a, a minister who's correctly handling the word of God and who's also valuing the time, the resources that God is uh, giving to us. Remember the parable of the stewards, you know, God is going to hold us accountable for uh, not only the talents that he's given to us, but even the way that we uh, use what he has entrusted into our hands or entrusted into our uh, care. Okay, so don't demand uh, comforts or luxuries, you know, uh, just uh, uh, be satisfied with what uh, you have uh, received, what uh, you have, uh, you know, what people are giving to you. And, uh, uh, you know, God will just bless and uh, use you mightily, even as you honor him uh, by being a good steward of the time, the resources and the opportunities that he is giving you. Okay, So this is uh, the end of chapter uh, uh, four. Anyone has any questions on this chapter? On conduct we just uh, had a little one or two pages that we had to look at uh, in this chapter because we finished most of it in uh, the previous uh, uh, class last Friday any questions anyone has Okay, thank you, Viku. In person students, you have any questions? No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, if there are no questions, we'll move on to chapter five. Uh, chapter five is talking about uh, preaching, how, you know, uh, uh, as ministers of God, when we preach and teach, what are some of the important things that we need to keep in? Um, mind okay um, so we look at chapter 5 preaching God has ordained that uh, you know his word be preached so that um, uh, lives can be touched you know people can be edified be strengthened be encouraged um, you know that uh, when people hear God's word being preached being taught you know lives will be saved uh, sinners will repent of their sins. People will also be healed, restored, delivered, uh, because that is God's word. God's word is power. God's word is life. God's bring, word uh, brings about transformation. Uh, it brings about edification, correction, um, and it uh, trains us in righteousness and in his holy Yes. So, you know, what are some of the things that we need to keep in mind, even as we preach or uh, teach um, um, God's word? OK, so even as, uh, you know, being a preacher or being a teacher of God's word is not a, a, a very fancy position. It's not something that, um, uh, you know, is something that we can boast about, uh, but it is something that uh, we need to hold with great, uh, you know, uh, uh, responsibility, with great reverence, because it is a higher call. Uh, and, uh, you know, it is something that we have to live by higher standards, uh, because uh, we who teach or we who preach uh, will be uh, uh, judged because it says in James chapter 3 verse 1, my brethren, let not many of you become teachers knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. Okay, so those of us who are going to be preachers and teachers of God's word, you know, um, we who preach and teach will be judged more strictly uh, than others. So, you know, we need to be uh, prepared. Uh, we need to know, uh, you know, what are the boundaries that we need to work within, even as we preach and teach what we should be doing, what we um, do, doing. 
okay so we need to establish people in uh, god's word um, one of our objectives even as we preach and teach god's word uh, the main objective is not for people to know how good a speaker we are or how anointed we are how uh, you know intellectual we are or how much of wisdom knowledge we have about god's word um, all that is important our style charisma all that is important but you know, the main important thing is that you know we, we need to preach and teach god's word with this objective with this motive uh, that you know people will be established in god's um, word and God's word will build them up, uh, will enable them, uh, you know, to know their identity in Christ, uh, will help them to overcome their temptations, their uh, uh, their weaknesses. Uh, you know, they will. It will give them the strength and the endurance and the perseverance to run their race. Um, it will also help them to know. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the ways of God, the nature of God, what God is doing in their life, um, how he is acting, how uh, uh, he is moving uh, in their lives. So to recognize things, uh, that is the that should be the main objective of preaching and teaching um, uh, God's word so that God's people are firmly established in God's word, um, you know, and also uh, they are not driven by any uh, kind of false doctrines, false teachings that come up uh, that kind of sway people uh, because uh, it's, uh, you know, very emotional, it's very intellectual, it's very pleasing to their senses. Uh, but how people can be uh, built up and grounded in the truth of God's word so that they can be able to overcome any um, uh, you know, uh, 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 false doctrines that come. You know, look at what uh, uh, Paul writes uh, in uh, Acts chapter 20, verse 32. You know, his uh, Paul's final uh, ad admonition to the churches or the elders uh, uh, from Ephesus. What does he tell them? Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Can one of you please read that? So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Thank you. So here are Paul's final admonition to the elders uh, at the churches uh, of Ephesus. You know, he's what is he saying? I commend you to God and to the word of his uh, grace. So he's pointing them to God. He's saying, you know, always let your focus be on God who God is, what he does, his nature, uh, and to his uh, word. And he says, this is what is going to, you know, build you up and give you an inheritance. This is what is going to give you your physical, your spiritual inheritance. Your blessing comes uh, by, you know, knowing who God is, his nature. And also it is, um, you know, uh, by, uh, you know, reading his word and staying aligned to his um, word and what does he say to the uh, churches when he writes uh, in Ephesians the churches at Ephesians he says you know you sh uh, can somebody read that Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14 that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness and deceitful plotting thank you so here you know, Paul is saying that, uh, you know, there are men who, uh, you know, trick others. They are so smart, uh, you know, they're so cunning, they're so crafty. You know, crafty is uh, 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 is the work of the enemy, you know, very sly, very slowly, just like uh, uh, how uh, Satan tempted Eve, you know, uh, just a few lines, uh, very craftily, uh, very smartly, very cunningly, and how he fell into uh, 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 Satan's deception, his craftiness. So, uh, you know, there are people who, uh, you know, very craftily, very cunningly, um, you know, uh, can uh, lead us away from the 
uh, truth. And so he says, you know, you should not be people who are, you know, being tossed to and fro, you know, just going here and there. Uh, but you should, uh, you know, be uh, strong, uh, made up in your mind about the truth. What is the truth uh, so that you stand by the truth and you're not just going right, left and going any and every other way. What people uh, are saying, just believing them and just um, following them. OK, so uh, it's important uh, for us to uh, also, you know, be careful. Paul is writing to the church of the Ephesus. He's written this uh, many years back. And we think that's not, uh, you know, applicable for us today. But it is because, you know, in the day and age that we are uh, we are in, there will be many false prophets, many people who deceive, uh, many false doctrines. And uh, how are we able to uh, know if it is a, uh, it's a truth or it's a cult or it's a false doctrine is only when we are established in uh, God's word. And how will we teach people? You know, all of you are in, in, a, in a Bible college, whether you're in person, online, whether you do e-learning or you're part of the Bible college. And I'm sure your main motive is just beyond, uh, you know, just gathering some information about what the Bible says on various doctrines. It's also so that you're better equipped to minister to people. So, you know, the important thing is uh, you, we need to study God's word, you know. Uh, including me, we need to study God's word. Uh, we need to be equipped in God's word so that, you know, when people have doubts, when they have questions, uh, we are able to guide them and show them from God's word uh, what is the truth. Uh, you know, when people are grounded in the truth, they will not sway easily to your right or left. They will hold on to what is the uh, truth. And we know that, uh, you know, our enemy is uh, very crafty, he's a deceiver, he's a liar. And uh, it's so much, uh, uh, and so it is so uh, important for us uh, to be established in the truth because we also can, uh, you know, uh, be drawn away. We can be deceived by his lies. There are so many of his lies that some of us are believing and living that's so dangerous. You know, just the basic thing that, you know, some of us believe that, you know, I'm good for nothing, I, I can't do this, I can't do that, or I'm a failure. Uh, you know, nobody loves me. Uh, I'm not good looking. I'm not smart. I'm not intelligent. I can never do this. I can never do that. It's the lie of the enemy that we are believing. I can never be healed of this. I have to live with this. I can never overcome this. It's all the lie of the enemy. And li believing lies is so dangerous. And so it's even for uh, for our own personal lives, for the way we think about ourselves, the way we look at ourselves, for our own uh, self-image, our own self-identity, our own self-value. It's so important for us uh, to be rooted in God's word so that, you know, when these... Um, uh, uh, when the enemy bombards us with his lies, we're able to overcome that with the truth in God's uh, word. Okay. The next one is uh, be pure, reverent, genuine, and wholesome. Uh, look at what uh, Paul is uh, uh, telling young Tim, uh, Titus. Uh, what is he telling Titus and uh, the churches at Crete? where uh, Titus, young Titus, is overseeing the churches at Crete. So can one of you please read Titus chapter 2, verse 7 and 8, please? In all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works, in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. Thank you, Rin. So here we see that, you know, Paul is saying that, uh, you know, even as uh, he's just defining the standard we must maintain, even as we minister God's word. So there should be integrity. That means, you know, um, what we preach and teach uh, should not just be made up of uh, some stories, some myth mythological stories, uh, man-made stories or, uh, you know, philosophies that are there. Um, uh, anything that contradicts God's truth, uh, but we need to teach the pure uh, word of God, uh, teach God's word without error. Uh, uh, the next thing is with reverence, we must, uh, even as we preach and teach God's word, uh, we must do it with respect. Um, though even the way that we deliver God's word needs to be done with respect. And also, uh, you know, we need to, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 
you know, also expect people who are listening to the message, you know, respect God's word even as uh, they are, uh, uh, even as we are preaching and teaching it. So, you know, even as we preach and teach God's word, it's not for us to just, you know, try to look cool and be nice and, uh, you know, um, speak the kind of language that people would uh, uh, be excited about, uh, be um, happy about, um, you know, uh, or just to feel accepted by the audience. Um, yes, we do that, but you know, uh, keeping our boundaries, keeping uh, things in place. Um, but we, even as we preach and teach, um, you know, and uh, use some cool words or try to look cool or try to be cool, uh, you know, you should not lose that sense of reverence and awe for God's word. Uh, and even as we minister, we uh, we are telling people that hey, we are listening to God, His word. So there's some sense of reverence that we need to give, uh, and it's not the same as uh, you know uh, how we talk in our casual conversations with our friends or acquaintances. But there is a sense of reverence that we have to hold towards God and towards His Word. And the other thing is uh, here: what Paul says is it should be the um, you know should be the word that we preach should be incorruptible. That means should be genuine. Uh, we, we don't preach something that we don't believe in, that we have not practiced ourselves, that we are not living in our own lives. Uh, it's not uh, just messages that we feel. Uh, we preach to make people feel good, to feel happy, to feel comfortable. Uh, so, you know, sometimes uh, people don't preach about uh, sin. Uh, we don't preach about God's wrath, his judgment, uh, that he's a God who punishes. We don't speak about uh, heaven or hell. Uh, we don't sp uh, we don't speak on all of these, uh, uh, you know, topics, uh, even concerning uh, integrity, uh, you know, honesty, um, uh, uh, you know, being a good stewards, being accountable for the time that we spend, uh, the money that God has given to us, the talents. We don't want to speak on all of these things about, and also about our mind, you know, and what we see and how we live our life, conduct. Uh, because, we know, when we speak this, people get uh, uncomfortable. Uh, they, they, then they, we think that they will not come back to our church services. They'll not listen to us um, because uh, people will say that we sound like the Old Testament prophets who are always talking about sin, judgment, uh, you know, the uh, the wrath of God and things like that. So we avoid all of these topics. We just talk about peace and prosperity and blessings and hope and you know uh, all of those things. Yes, it is important that we you know have all of this in our messages and sermons and the teaching as well but it's also important to uh, talk about um, sin and uh, salvation i remember you know when i was in bible college uh, i don't know if i shared this example uh, when i was in bible college uh, and i came down to bangalore for my holidays uh, one of the pastors in one of the mainline churches asked me to come and it was christmas time it was december he asked me to speak uh, 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 Share a mess, you know, a sermon in in his church, and uh, this is something he told me. He said, uh, "You can talk about anything from God's word, but don't talk about sin and salvation." And I was shocked because uh, you can't preach a uh, you know a, a Christmas message without talking about sin and salvation. Why did Jesus come? You know, why are we celebrating his birth? It's because he came down to the earth. Why did God become man? So that, you know, he can die for the sins of this whole world. He can, you know, um, we can receive salvation uh, by what he does on the cross, by him taking our place, our punishment. And um, so, you know, uh, I just didn't say yes or no. I just kept quiet. But when I went, uh, I preached about, uh, I, I preached a Christmas message, but I did talk about sin and salvation. I did give an altar call uh, for those of them who want to repent of their sins. Uh, I know what was, you know, uh, uh, what was the outcome of it. Um, of course, there were many of them who um, said they were blessed by the sermon, which is okay. I mean, uh, the glory goes to God. Uh, but the pastor didn't come and meet me after the service. He didn't talk to me. Uh, he didn't invite me back to his church, nothing. So I just uh, stood at the, uh, you know, uh, entrance of the church when everybody was leaving, wished everybody. And there's nobody who came and spoke to me after that. And I just quietly took my Bible in my bag and I left. But, you know, it's important that um, we honor God. Um, uh, uh, you know, he's to ask us to, you know, given us this great commission um, 
uh, to preach and teach and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's what we need to do. Uh, and, you know, we can't uh, please men. We can't be men pleasers, but we need to be God pleasers and honor uh, him in what we preach and what we um, say. Okay. The last thing is, uh, so we don't feel, uh, don't just speak or but feel good messages, but we also need to talk about sin and salvation because that is what the gospel is all about. That is why Christ came. That is the good news of uh, Jesus Christ. The last thing is, uh, he says here in Titus chapter two, verse seven and eight, is sound speech. Okay. So when we speak, we need to speak wholesome words. Uh, we don't uh, use say things that uh, you know people can hold us accountable, uh, uh, which means we don't um, you know criticize other preachers, teachers, uh, other churches, other denominations. Uh, we don't uh, make fun of people, uh, you know, with their weaknesses and the challenges that they're facing. Just don't make some uh, you know uh, kind of stupid so-called stupid jokes. Um, uh, which people will think it's so in, inappropriate for a, a minister of God, uh, a, a, a minister of God even sharing it from the pulpit or through his message, you know, that was such an a, 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 a inappropriate joke or, a, 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 you know, a line or a, something that was just said. So we need to talk things that are wholesome and, uh, you know, so that people uh, don't blame our preaching and our teaching and what, uh, you know, uh, how we are doing, how we are preaching and teaching as uh, well. Okay. Any questions on this so far? Okay. The next thing is we need to preach to impart. Okay, impart uh, into people's lives uh, and not to impress people. Okay, look at what uh, Paul uh, writes to the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17. Can one of you please read that? 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17. Um, 2 Corinthians 2, 17. For we are not as so many peddling the word of God but as of a sincerity and as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. Yes, sir. Uh, can you also read uh, 2 Corinthians 4 to Nina, please? Thank you. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4 to. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Thank you, Nina. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17, Paul is saying, For we are not so many peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. So um, this phrase, peddling the word of God, is uh, basically the idea that is taken uh, in a wine shop, you know, uh, in a wine shop, you know, um, uh, the owner dilutes uh, the wine or mixes other, uh, you know, cheaper wine or cheaper alcohol, cheaper drinks. Uh, he dilutes it and, uh, you know, he mixes it with not something that is genuine wine, but something that is much more cheaper. So here Paul is saying uh, in the ministry, there are two things that we need to keep in mind. That is two important things. You know, we don't dilute uh, the word of God and there is no mixture. OK, which means we don't dilute the word of God, means we don't mix God's word with, uh, you know, just man-made ideas, philosophies, um, you know, popular uh, or nice thoughts um, with the word of God. Uh, even as we preach and teach God's word, it should be the uncompromised, undiluted uh, word of God. And also here is, we see that, you know, um, what is should be our motivation when we preach or teach as ministers of God. Our motivation is that we need to impart truth and revelation uh, that will result in transformation of lives. 
So uh, preaching and teaching God's word is not for people to come and say, uh, to tell us, you know, uh, oh, you're so charismatic in the way you preach, you have such good charisma, your words, uh, um, it's so intellectual what you preach, um, you know, um, there is style, there is, uh, you know, the diction is so good, uh, everything is so good, and, you know, people uh, people's emotions are uh, stirred up, uh, they feel good, they feel comfortable. That is not what is uh, more important uh, when we preach. What should be our motivation when we preach is not to impress people. Uh, well, you know, all these are very, very important. The style, our diction, our pronunciations, uh, the the words that we use. We need to, you know, always uh, come up to a higher level or a higher standard in the way we preach and teach. So we need to, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, we need to grow in those areas of how we can be better preachers, how, how we can use better words and how we can um, use clear good sentences and how to preach, uh, uh, you know, just to uh, um, kind of catch the uh, uh, attention of our audience. But at the same time, it should not just be to impress people, but the main motive or the uh, idea behind our preaching is uh, so that, you know, we are imparting the truth. We are imparting the revelation from God's word, uh, which should bear fruit in the lives of people. You know, just make them feel good, comfortable, impress them. Uh, uh, that they, that any you know people can any person can do a politician can also speak to impress people, uh, but this is wor the word of God and word of God is not just to impress people. The word of God, uh, you know, corrects people. It rebukes. It trains in righteousness and holiness. It encourages. It builds up. It strengthens. It motivates people, and uh, it you know it leads to life transformation. That is what we must be uh, looking for. Uh, motivation is God. When I preach and teach, uh, you know, people should uh, experience your love. People should uh, uh, repent of their sins. You know, bondages should be broken. Strongholds should be broken. The lies of the enemy that they're believing uh, should be broken in their lives. That should be our motivation. And our, um, our motivation should not just be that we impress people and people say it's a nice sermon. That is something that is uh, very disappointing. But if they say, you know, we should be disappointed with that. But if they say, you know, uh, we were blessed, um, uh, you know, um, uh, we, uh, you know, it brought about so much of, uh, 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 you know, meaning in, to my life. It brought so much of purpose. It helped me, you know, turn around uh, uh, in the situations that, uh, you know, I am going through or it brought about a turnaround in my life is what we need to be looking for. So when we, uh, when our focus and our desire is that, you know, remember God's word says that uh, he will grant us the desires of our heart. So when our desire is, God, when I preach and teach, I want people to lives to be transformed, uh, you know, then God will fulfill that desire. But if I desire this, God, I want people uh, to be impressed uh, so that they come to my church, my church grows, people will love me, I have a great fan following, then that is what you rec uh, will receive because that is your desire. God will give you your uh, desire. But our desire should be that people's, uh, you know, lives are transformed and they're ushered into the kingdom of uh, God. Okay, uh, There are times when we have to preach um, difficult topics. When we do that, we do it with love. So we are not just talking about messages about uh, hope, faith, success, blessings, prosperity, but also talk about uh, topics like personal character, um, uh, you know, uh, sexual purity, about uh, you know uh, keeping the marriage covenant, uh, how to be keep uh, uh, how how to be in uh, how to have integrity in our finances, um, in the way we spend our time, uh, integrity in our uh, personal in our personal times, uh, 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 in the way we serve God, in the way we work, in the way we do our business, uh, about forgiving others, forgiveness, sacrifices, and so on. So these are some of the difficult topics. But you know, when we when we share on these difficult topics, um, first of all, we need to share these difficult topics. We have to preach and teach on them. Um, 
even as we do it, the key is love. Like we read in Ephesians chapter 4, verses, uh, verse 15, it says, you know, speaking the truth in love and so that uh, we may grow up in all things into him who is the head, that is Christ. So even as we preach and teach, we do it in love, uh, not standing there condemning people, uh, you know, judgmentally or, uh, you know, looking down on people as to say that we are perfect, uh, you know, uh, uh, we have got it all right in our own lives. Uh, so, you know, don't preach these messages, uh, trying of bringing uh, in a way that it uh, condemns people, that uh, it's uh, judgmental, uh, it's like, you know, talking down on them, putting them down. Uh, but we need to, uh, you know, the key here is we need to do it in uh, in love. We need to speak the truth in love, as God's word says. And why we, we need to speak the truth in love so that, you know, we can grow up in all things into him who is head, uh, that is uh, uh, Christ. Okay, so it's difficult to speak on these topics, but we can ask God's grace, can give us the grace, and even as we do it, we speak it in love. Um, and, uh, you know, um, we do it so that, you know, even as we speak it in love, we speak the truth in love, you know, we do it with the goodness of God, like it says in Romans chapter 2, uh, verse 4, not knowing that the goodness of God leads to repentance. Okay, so our main motive is our messages to be, you know, be life transforming. So when we speak the truth in love with the goodness of God, rather than, you know, uh, talking, it, you know, uh, preaching is in a judgmental way, in a condemning way, you know, uh, it will only, when we do that in a condemning, judgmental, and uh, in a way that it puts down people, it will just, uh, you know, it kind of uh, irritate people, it will kind of uh, disturb them, it will kind of get them very angry, so, and it'll just drive people away from God, they will not want to change and repent, but we read here in Romans chapter 2, verse 4 says, the goodness of God leads to uh, repentance, okay, so when we do it with the goodness of God, it will lead people to um, uh, repent. Okay, and even as we speak these difficult topics, uh, we need to tell people that, uh, you know, we also struggle with the same things. We are not perfect, uh, but we are also, uh, you know, in the same journey of, uh, you know, working on these weaknesses, these challenges. Uh, you know, we are striving towards perfection. We are not perfect, so we are still striving towards perfection. And, uh, you know, just encourage them to join along with us even as we journey into uh, Christ-likeness. So when we put ourselves in the same place of other people, we bring ourselves in the same level of other people, other people will also uh, listen. So, you know, when I go and um, I teach children in school, you know, I'm part of uh, APC School Outreach Ministry Catalyst. Uh, you know, I can be talking to them about all of these things and they can, uh, you know, it can just go out of their mind and say, okay, this is difficult. What does she know? She doesn't, uh, she doesn't know the challenges, the difficulties that we go through. But, you know, I always give them my my uh, examples from my own personal life. You know, when I was your age, I did this, I went through this. And that is why I'm able to, you know, understand what you're also going through. You know, when I say that, you know, I have seen a better response. You know, students have come to me after class and said, ma'am, you know, I also am going through this, I'm going through that. Uh, they're better able to respond and listen. And uh, then I say, you know, I went through this and how, you know, God helped me. Uh, get out of it, overcome it. Um, and then they know, okay, there is a God who can help us. Uh, I can go to Jesus. He's not just a God who's punishing me. You know, I'm talking to non-Christian children as well, but he's a God who's there to help me. Uh, he's not just a God of uh, wrath and punishment, um, waiting to judge me, but a God who's uh, waiting to, you know, help me uh, 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 get on the right path, forgive me when I repent, uh, guide me, lead me, uh, and strengthen me in those uh, weak areas. So uh, it's good to share um, your own personal life journeys, stories, so people also know that the preacher and teacher is not way up there and you know, what the he or she is talking makes sense only to them. Uh, but okay, they've gone through it, you know, um, uh, and I'm also going through it, uh, which means that I can also come out just like they have come out or they can come through this challenge or difficulty just like, uh, you know, the person has is sharing their own um, testimony. Okay, so 
uh, you know, uh, it says in Proverbs, we need to, to speak in sweetness of the lips, uh, which increases learning. So when there's sweetness uh, on our lips, it increases learning. But when there's harshness, condemnation, uh, judgmental attitude, you know, it just puts off uh, people. Okay. So when we preach and teach, just let people know that you're also not perfect. You're also striving towards uh, uh, being more Christ-like. Uh, we've not got everything together ourselves, but we're also trying to journey towards uh, that. Okay. The next one is rightly divide the word of God. You know, even as we preach and teach, we need to maintain sound doctrine and rightly divide uh, the word of God. Okay. We'll stop here. Uh, it's time for our break and we'll come back. Uh, we just have one more minute, but any, 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 anyone has any questions? Any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, we'll uh, go for our break now and we'll come back after our break. Okay, thank you.